let's talk a little bit more about this sentiment. We, we really talked about how there have been a number of reasons to be bearish lately. And certainly when war broke out in the Middle East uh, between Israel and Hamas, uh, that was certainly another reason to just think uh, uncertainty and how the market hates uncertainty. Uh, you've had the inflation, you've had the skyrocketing uh, interest rates, um, all of these things that have kind of created this wall of worry. So how do you how do you combat that when the price action is telling you something different, Mark? Well, and this is where process is kind of key, you know, well, not kind of is, <laughs> yeah. is the key to keep you keeping you uh, what I would say insulated from the noise. Uh, and to your point, sentiment is bad. It's always bad at bottoms. Uh, that's what makes bottoms, you know, and, and even thinking about, I mentioned put call, you know, or you hear people say things like, well, the market's sold out. Well, that's essentially what, when, when everyone's running for puts and in insurance mm -hmm. is usually when those insurance contracts don't pay, uh, you know, and th thinking in terms of like even buying puts when volatility is high is a form of selling. That's people saying, well, you know, rather than just puking all my positions, I'll just way overpay for put protection. When yeah. everyone's doing it at the same time, that, you know, that's that it's, it's that psychology of there's nobody left to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they've already done all the selling uh, now. So normally in these type of environments, you know, sometimes that just means you get a snapback rally. And this is kind of where we are right now. Uh, you know, we've had it's let, let's be honest. We had an accumulation day that was I would not say was overly impressive at this point. Here is where I want to see. Can we get more, a uh, little bit more firepower on, on the buy side? I'd like to see even another accumulation day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I'd love to see the sentiment stay negative, uh, you know, or stay very pessimistic. If everybody all of a sudden, you know, just goes from one side of the boat to the other and becomes, you know, wildly <laughs> bullish again, that, that's usually, uh, you know, not, a, not the best recipe. But to me, the best cocktail, if you will, is when sentiment stays pessimistic, you know, off of these bottoms. And then the market marks itself up maybe in the general averages, but then you start to see more stock ideas and yeah. people doubt them. You know, yeah. The breakouts no one else wants to buy mm -hmm. uh, are the ones I want to buy. Uh, you know, if everybody loves my ideas and think, you know, I mean, look, okay, we got a war, we got high interest rates. You mentioned inflation. We got four reasons not to buy anything, right? Yeah. Now let's say we get a whole bunch of merchandise starting to break out of bases. Sign me up. I, I, I've got to be buying those. Uh, doesn't mean they're going to work, but I can promise you, um, you know, doing what other people aren't willing to do and doing it repeatedly will eventually lead to really good results. And that's, I think that's just good advice for life in general. Um, you know, because the crowd's always wrong. Um, so right now though, specifically, yeah. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I've had the view that, you know, in order for equities to, to really get some traction, specifically growth, we're probably going to need to see rates come off, uh, you know, prices, you know, yields come down, prices, you know, come up. You, you can look at the TLT specifically, you know, say for the, the long end of the curve, or you get the 10 year up. I mean, you could almost time the top in the summer to when this started breaking down, you know, mm -hmm. uh, well, but I'm not going to be married to that view. So let's say, here's a really good example. Uh, if I get so focused on rates where I go, well, I'm not going to buy any stocks until I see rates do X. Am I trading rates or am I trading stocks? I'm trading stocks. So, and I actually think the best stocks are going to lead. So the, the classic, also, I don't like watching, don't take your cues from the index at first, take it from the leading names. So yeah. though, as you guys know, and I, and this is one of these, you can't say it enough to people that are new or even experienced. I, I'm saying it to myself, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm preaching to the converted here, like yes. it's, you know, telling, telling myself, like, you've got to take your cues from the individual names. Yeah. Uh, they're going to lead and break out. Maybe, maybe rates don't really top for another, I don't know, month, uh, could be three months. But if the leading names are, 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 you know, again, there's an intelligence at work in the market, I, I, I tend to think. Yeah. Uh, they're telling you ahead of time, you know, that this is what's, what's taking place. So right. I, with a caveat, I will say, though, could I be dead wrong on, on all of this? And 
it, I would be shocked if rates continue to surge higher and stocks were to break out. However, I'm still going to default to the stocks. Mm -hmm. uh, now, most likely that won't happen. But if it does, I don't have a rule that says, well, I can't buy a, you know, a great cup and handle breakout on big volume um, if rates are at X percent. That, that's, not how my, that's not how my process works. The process says screen for stocks, you know, buy, buy companies in the right groups with big earnings and high RS, you know, coming out of constructive right hand sides of their chart. Uh, so that, that's essentially what I'm going to do, regardless of what the sentiment and the other things say. And generally, the more contrarian the sentiment, um, the better it is for guys like us. 